Hello everybody, welcome back to CNS Corvettes in Sarasota, Florida. It's your Corvette buddy Lyle here back to talk to you about more interesting, exciting, and fun Corvette stuff. Before we get started today, I wanted to thank you for watching the video. If you haven't yet liked or subscribed or clicked the notification bell for our channel, please do. I'm talking to you, the 73% of people who watch my videos and get good information and aren't subscribed. Remember, it costs you nothing. There is no fee, there is, you don't have to ever do anything again, but it really helps us. So a, the best thank you you can give me, short of sending me cold hard cash, is to just hit the subscribe button. And if you click the notification bell, that's the time that YouTube will reach out to you when new content comes out from us. So all 73% of you who get good stuff out of this, what you can do for me is hit subscribe. Ah, thank you. Now, on to today's video. Well guys, fall has fallen and we're fast approaching the winter months, which means most people up north or most people in temperate climates are getting ready to put their Corvettes away for the year. Uh, I've talked about uh, storage tips and stuff in the past and I've got some updated stuff I wanna go over with you. So this is for winter 2023 or just general long-term Corvette storage. These are some of the tips that I have, not only from our own experience, but from certain experts that I will tell you about. Number one, when you get ready to put your car away, obviously make sure you have washed it, waxed it, checked all your fluid levels, make sure that everything, you know, brake fluid, power steering fluid, transmission fluid, if you're lucky enough to have one of the older cars where you can actually check it, check all that stuff, make sure it's good. Then what you wanna do is right before you put the car into storage, you want to fill up your tank, preferably with non-ethanol fuel, and you're gonna add a can of Stabil, pictured here. Uh, that really allows, that's supposed to keep fuel good for up to 24 months. I know it's gonna keep fuel good for up to six months. So that'll definitely be an advantage. And now I know, before you start, hold on, hold on. I know you guys, some guys are gonna say, well, no, when storage, you need to keep less than a quarter tank in your car because where I store my car, that's what I tell, that's what they tell me. Well, they tell you that for insurance purposes on their end. It's so that there's as little fuel as possible should there be a problem in the garage and it doesn't burn the whole building down. The idea is the more fuel you have in your fuel tank, the less air space is in your fuel tank, i.e. less condensation can form, thereby infiltrating the fuel. And especially if you aren't lucky enough to have non-ethanol fuel, condensation, i.e. water, is what starts the globulization of the stuff in the ethanol fuel. So again, if you're in an area where you can get non-ethanol fuel, fill it up, add a can of Stabil, and you should be good with a fuel system. In fact, what I do, or well, what I tell people, because we don't have to store our cars here, what I tell people is go to the gas station, put a can of stable in the tank, fill it all the way up, drive like 50, 60 miles, and then top the tank off. That way you've run the stable through the entire fuel system. It's not just sitting in the tank, word to the wise. Secondly, tires. Now, if you're going to be storing your car in freezing temperatures on a bare concrete floor in a non-heated area, or God forbid, on a dirt floor barn, there's certain things I would recommend you do for the good of your tire life. Number one, if you have the tires mounted on the car, and let me preface this by saying, several people that I know who have Corvettes have more than one set of tires and wheels because they do autocrossing or track days or they just change them up depending on what show they're going to. The wheels mounted on your car, wheels and tires on your car, according to Goodyear, not to Lyle, according to Goodyear, you wanna overinflate them by 25%. So if your normal is 32% or 32 pounds per square inch is what you normally keep them at, add 25% more pressure to all four tires. That will help them from when things get really cold and everything contracts, that they will still maintain their shape without flattening out for the wheels or tires being stored in the corner of the garage that are your race tires or your show tires or whatever, as long as they're mounted to wheels, you actually wanna take the PSA down to 15 PSI, enough to keep the bead sealed and enough to keep their shape, but since they have no weight on them, there's no point in keeping them fully inflated. It's just trust me on this. Um, another thing you can do uh, that a lot of folks who really are concerned about 
flat spotting their tires is you can buy a set of tire cradles. Basically, uh, here's a picture of them right here. Um, they come in a bag, there's four of them, and basically they're tiny little ramps that you drive up on that have this curved surface. So instead of your tire sitting on a flat surface, it is kind of gently cupped ever so lovingly to maintain the uh, roundness of your tire. Um, you know, I don't sell these things. They're on Amazon. There's a link in the description below. Same thing with the stable. Um, but that's a good idea and it's not a bad thing to have. Uh, third, I highly recommend that you put a battery tender like this one on your car. Now, I know that there's a lot of people who are like, well, I really, really, either unhook your battery completely and just have it even out of the car if you want and then fully charge it over 24 hours when springtime comes or if you want to maintain the battery in the car i highly recommend a battery tender they are inexpensive they are pretty much foolproof you can't screw this up uh, i highly recommend it that way when you do go to go get into your car and start unwinterizing it for driving in the springtime you don't have to go through the trouble of removing the battery fully charging and putting it back in your choice just an option uh, obviously if you have a car cover put a car cover on the car if you don't have a car cover find old sheets okay i'm sure everybody i know i've got like three sets of old sheets that i don't use anymore in my closet just drape them over the car to stop any of the little sprinkle debris dust or anything that might fall from your garage ceiling or the barn roof or whatever from nicking the paint it's just a good idea safety protection and it'll cost you nothing <clears throat> now the inside of the car if you're going to be sealing the car up you know windows all the way up for the entire you know several months of winter i highly recommend putting a desiccant bag like this one into the car uh, these particular ones are pretty cool because they will remove any extraneous humidity or moisture in the car so you don't form any mold or anything like that over the winter months and these are not one use and throw away you can actually put them in your microwave for a few seconds and that refreshes them year after year so it's a reusable product and again if you have a show car that or, or you're just really particular about the interior car this is a great way to keep any extraneous moisture from gathering and causing, you know, just funky bits to grow. Uh, that's basically it for winter storage. If you have other questions or other ideas about winter storage, put them in the comments below and I'll follow up with them in a follow up video. Uh, this is also a good time if you're kind of bored during the winter, but you've got a place that is sheltered and relatively warm to work. It's a good time to do some small projects. Uh, things like uh, rebuilding the headlight motors in your C4 or C5, changing out the sun visors on your C4 or C5, LED lighting upgrades, all the stuff that I talk about in my other videos. This is a good time to do that because you really don't have to have your car in the air or any heavy equipment to do those jobs. And if you have questions about those, hit me in the comments and I'll get back to you. In the meantime, for those of you up north who are putting your Corvettes to sleep for the winter, I wish them peace. I wish them a peaceful, long, restful winter nap. And I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday while they're sleeping. I'll be back next week with more exciting, interesting Corvette stuff. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Have a great day.